Hello everyone and welcome back to Blockchain for Humanity channel. Today we have a, a special guest joining us all the way from Africa. His name is uh, Nzonda Fotsin and uh, he's the creative mind behind the children's book Bitcoin Kids, which is a, a fantastic way to, to teach children about the world of Bitcoin. Zonda, it's a pleasure to have you here. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks, thanks, Ivan, for for having me. It's always a pleasure to to come on board and uh, talk about Bitcoin. Let's cool. go. Cool. So, uh, first of all, um, can you tell us a little bit uh, about yourself? How you got in the Bitcoin world, and um, what inspired you to write uh, this book? Oh, my my biggest story is uh, started way back from uh, 2017. But uh, before 2017, I've always been somebody who likes um, technology, who is uh, very curious to know about what the internet can bring to me as a young African and stuff like that. So doing my research over the years and stuff like that, as I worked as a digital marketer and at the same time, somebody who helps um, other people put their businesses online, I discovered Bitcoin. And uh, with a group of friends at the time, um, we invested into Bitcoin without necessarily understanding exactly what it is. At the time, we we're just looking at it as some sort of uh, some other source of income that you don't need to maybe um, be there, like a passive source of income, you know. But we didn't really know exactly like the value and everything like that because we were just like basing ourselves on the knowledge that was just existing uh, around us, you know. And at the time, too, there wasn't enough content online, maybe on YouTube or somewhere like that, where you could go learn and then read, you know, so that kind of thing. And uh, we, at the time, um, I think the only website was like uh, Coinbase. So mm. uh, we, put, we put some money together um, and uh, we, what we, we took out the step towards investment and unfortunately somebody had cloned the coinbase website so he just make oh. like a we like duplicate of the coinbase website and then he just changed the domain name where you put zero the person put o so you see which coinbase but the zero and the o if you don't pay attention you can't make the difference so that's how we got um scammed and then the money went down the drain because we never after that, the website, I think like two weeks later, the website was in existing and then we realized that it was the fake um, Coinbase website and stuff like that. So, wow. but for me personally, that was like the starting point for me to start going um, down the rabbit hole because I decided that, um, yes, I just got scammed. Yes, I lost money. Yes, it's bad. Yes, the people around me don't understand what this thing is, but I feel, I deeply feel like this is something that might change. Um, some things tomorrow, how we see money and stuff like that. So that is how I started going like a bit deeper. It was it was difficult because um, I didn't have like a more, enough time to put it to inverse in the learning and to understanding the Bitcoin for myself because I had other things that I needed to do. So I just got calm. I just know that Bitcoin is no more like something I could rely on as an investment channel. So I, will, I wasn't spending enough time to learn. So it was only, only until around uh, 2019 that I really now started to, to put in some effort, like conscious effort, being mindful and being very intentional about le learning Bitcoin. Then I read the Bitcoin standard. I read 21 lessons and uh, I read a couple of other books um, and that just opened everything for me. And that's how I got to start interacting with a lot of other Bitcoiners on the, on Twitter and stuff like that. And then from there, I started creating um, small stuff. So, so I started doing um, um, online webinars where I wanted to teach people about uh, Bitcoin. But for that, the Bitcoin uh, religion, the Bitcoin kind of way of thinking had, had not yet clicked because I was still dabbling with other cryptos and, and stuff like that. Yeah, and at one point, just to understand how the blockchain worked, I became a, a, a blockchain developer on Ethereum, right? So just to understand how the whole mix and stuff works. Yeah, but uh, at one point, I'm, I'm like, as I kept reading, reading, I started listening to a lot of podcasts and stuff, so I understanding different people's ideology. And I think... The podcast that changed everything for me is, I think it's Swan. I forget his name. It's Swan something. 
yeah, I think he was one of the first people who started um, Bitcoin's one, I think, yeah. That started podcasts in, in Bitcoin space and stuff. So I started following his podcast and I, most of the people who came there was just going back, following them on Twitter, started interacting and then I just got to a whole new world where I just like left every other thing and then just became like a full-time uh, Bitcoin and stuff like that. So during that time as well, as I was doing the webinar and then putting content online, um, I got the opportunity to to work with Paxful, Paxful, which is a P two P um marketplace where people come and buy and sell Bitcoin, which was something that I I felt like it was just the next possible step for me to take because after right. learning about Bitcoin, after sharing the value of Bitcoin to people, now you need to make make sure that people understand how to use Bitcoin and the different things, how Bitcoin can be transformational to them. So after, the, while I was working at Paxful, um, we're doing like, most of my, my job was to develop the business and talk to people about Bitcoin and stuff like that. So while I was doing that, a lot of people always keep asking me like, I want to understand what Bitcoin is, but it's complicated. You know, I always have to like, there's some particular group of people that you have to take more time to, to explain. So that's how the idea of me creating a material that will help these people as fast as they can to understand Bitcoin. That's how the, the idea start, started uh, materializing. But I didn't know the idea would turn out into a book, right? So it was only when like a few months later, I was working on my computer, like I'm sitting now in my parlor. Um, and then my, four, my three year, at the time it was three years old, he came around and I was doing something regarding Bitcoin. And then the logo popped up, the, the Bitcoin logo popped up on the screen. And they asked me, Dad, what's that? I said, Bitcoin. I said, what's Bitcoin? I said, it's digital money. And I said, what's digital money? <laughs> and I, I'm like, I, will, I pause because I know if I want to explain what digital money is to a kid like that, it's going to be very complicated. So as he left, that's how the idea of Bitcoin kids just popped up in my head and then like a few hours later, I just started working on it. So the workings of the book is just me taking like these big concepts of Bitcoin, putting it together, just, just putting it in a way that even if you're an adult, you've never heard about Bitcoin, but you're interested in learning, it's just be like your first step to to get into the, the rabbit hole. Yeah. Wow. So that's, that's a uh, bit of my... <laughs> that's an incredible yeah. story. So uh, yeah. what, uh, what are the main subjects? covered in the book yeah so there are four main things that are covered in the book so the the, the history of bitcoin the value of bitcoin uh bitcoin use cases right mm. like the different that um, yeah and uh, why bitcoin is important so those are the like four topics i didn't want to really complicate it because i want to keep like sure. really busy so once you pick it up within 30 minutes you already understand where you're going to your Bitcoin journey. Are you interested in Bitcoin or not, right? So, yeah, it, may, it, may, it helps you make that decision, like, really fast. And uh, most of the people that have been able to read the book so far, it has helped them to make the decision that, oh, Bitcoin, I didn't know we, we could always we could have something like this, this kind of content where it becomes very interesting, you know, so, yeah. So, and uh, why, why children? Why do you think it's important uh children teaching about the bitcoin so children two things right the first thing is the two the, the the kids that we have today are the digital native kids right and if we don't put out the, the information in the right way for them to consume for them to create better value tomorrow i think they're going to miss the the different steps that they might want to take to get to the place where they want to get and the, and the second thing is um teaching kids about financial literacy from a tangent, it prepares them for the real life, right? It makes them to understand that there are things that when I grow up as an adult, I need to be conscious, I need to be intentional about. So those are the two uh, main reasons why um, I think it's important to 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 create such a educational content for kids. That's great. And uh, how the children and, uh, and the parents uh, responded to the book? Yeah, first, first of, when I was creating the book, I wasn't looking at, it was my first time doing something like that. I wasn't looking at it from like a bigger, bigger spectrum. I was just doing something to help my son to understand that Bitcoin is beyond just digital money. It's something that you can really embrace. And then, you know, 
So, but like when people came came to the house and started seeing the, the stuff and then they start saying one or two positive things and they started putting ideas in my head and, and stuff like that, I, I began to, to realize how important the book can be for not just my son, but for other parents who have kids as well. Right. So when when the book was finally out, when we sent out for me before, like a uh, test reading or something like that, every like the feedback that came in was really um positive. Like there were feedback to improve like a few things here and there. But basically the foundation of how we were trying to um build that kind of mindset and that kind of uh, entertaining educa education for kids was really there. And that's what the parents were looking for. Great. And they were be positive, appreciative about the work as well. Yeah. And what about the um, what about the challenges you have to uh, you had to face the, during the publishing and uh, writing? Yeah. So I first I faced a lot of um, challenges um, financially. It was first one financially. Second, uh, writing a book was a whole new learning curve for me. And three the distribution and everything was something I, I was very, I, I didn't know anything. I was completely a novice. So first starting with the, the financial challenge, at a time when I was writing the book, I was working with a company where I was using part of my earnings to be able to fund the, the whole thing. Because when you look at the book, right? When you look at the drawings inside the book, I don't know if you can see. No, we cannot see because uh, you have the, the background. Ah, yeah, not now, now it's, uh, yeah, now. Yeah, so okay. it's, it's the 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 artist that did the book. I, I contracted the artist, and we had a deal, so I get to pay them. But the scenario and everything, the costume and everything, was the idea I gave to him, right? So because I'm not an I'm not a, I'm not a cartoonist, right? So <clears throat> at one point I was laid off from my from my practical job, and it became very difficult for me to continue finishing um the work of the book and stuff like that. So I had now to go into the Bitcoin community, then seek for help, right? And uh, it wasn't easy at first, I think the first two months. Um, and the, due to the fact that there was this financial constraint, it it like reduced the time when we were supposed to launch the book and stuff like that. But once I got my got into the Bitcoin community, when we had done like some few chapters of the book, I, I could I was just speaking or DMing people that I felt like they could help me put this work out there and stuff like that. So <clears throat> um, a few Bitcoiners, they, they came back to me, they connected me to other people and stuff like that. And uh, there's this one particular Bitcoiner who does uh, Bitcoin trading cards, Aladdin. Yeah. So he asked me to send like the, the chapters I've been, I've been able to do. And then he was like, let's let's do a call. I, I felt like maybe he wanted to maybe criticize one or two things and he told me, this work is marvelous. And uh, he asked me, like, what do I need? So I told him, and then he sent me the full amount with no strings attached. Wow. He told me, this, is, yeah, these were his words. Go finish your work and then make Bitcoin prosper to promote Bitcoin adoption, right? And that's how I finished the, the, the work. And if you see in every Bitcoin kids book, we have the, the logo of Bitcoin trading cards. That's that's how we also try to see how to uh, support here and this work here. So the financial part was done. Now the next thing was to figure out how the book is going to go to different places. That no, the next thing was publishing, right? Before the distribution. So in the publishing, I had like different uh, um, proposals, but all these proposals were taking the book away from me. Right. So I just give everything to the publisher. The publisher has the right to do whatever thing, you know, but I wasn't really feeling comfortable with that. So mm -hmm. I went to the route of um, self-publishing, meaning that um, regardless of how far the book can go, I still have control or have a say or whatever thing that uh, my, the book might want to be, might want to turn into. Right. So I did the self-publishing and then in terms of the distribution was that I think that's the most challenging part. Right, because if somebody wants the book in the U.S. and I'm in Cameroon or somewhere, you know, and at the time I was having difficulties uploading the book on Amazon because they kept rejecting and stuff, so um, we we decided I decided to contact um, Trezor Academy. Um, Trezor. Oh yeah, yeah. So we we had a deal, 
So they, they, they had to use their academy as a distribution strategy to, to push the book to different countries. So that's why you could go to Ghana, Tanzania, Maru, uh, Mozambique, Burundi, all these countries, Uganda, all these countries have the book, right? And to also ship the book to some countries in Latin America, but specifically El Salvador, um, Colombia, you know, most of these um, Latin American countries and stuff like that. So that's how that worked. And uh, they solved the problem for distribution. They helped me solve the problem. But even though that was going on, I still had like ways of, uh, I found different ways to move the book from Cameroon to Nigeria, to Ghana, to different countries and stuff like that. Yeah, and uh, I was able to like meet a lot of people um, during the African Bitcoin Conference last year, December, who have read the book and they were, uh, they were looking forward to meet me to talk about it, talk about next steps and stuff like that. So yeah, it's been it's been amazing so far. I didn't wow. know it would have like this much um, impact, you know. So and uh, it's, it was just my own little way of saying, hey, I understand Bitcoin and uh, this is what I can do to promote Bitcoin adoption and to make more and more people like and and make Bitcoin part of their daily life. That's fantastic. Did you did you manage to help with uh, translated in other other languages in in Spanish, for example, as you said, uh, it was for Latin America. Yeah. So um, for the copies that have gone out so far, most majority is just English, right? And uh, but the translated copies are going to be out like in a, uh, out a few months from now, like uh, by October. We have uh, the the French translation. We have. Uh, I think the Corsa translation, which is in the, the South African language, we have Swahili. And we're working on the Spanish translation right now. So, yeah. And all of that will be on the Bitcoin Kids um, website very soon, where people could go. And they will still put it on Amazon and uh, different websites where people could easily get it. Wow, fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, um, in your opinion, how Bitcoin can uh, help us to build a better or fair society? Yeah, Bitcoin in itself is something that is neutral. So if you begin to understand how Bitcoin works in an economy like, like our world in general, you realize that it's not just about the money. It's about you looking at somebody else. If you're having like a business deal, or whatever kind of interaction you're having with somebody, it could be social, it could be business or whatever. With Bitcoin in the mix, there is no room for you to feel like I need to cheat this person or I need to do less than what I can, I say I can do, right? Because there's something that puts you guys together, which is transparent, which is immutable and uh, which, which, which does not depend on you and I but it depends on all of us put together. It mm. makes our world to foster in a way that is more stronger, more trustworthy. And then it makes us think about the next generation. Like what are the next people that are going to come after us? What are they going to see one? What are they going to take from us too? And how are they going to perceive the world we left behind for them? So for me, Bitcoin transcends more than just the monetary exchange or stuff. It's more like uh, a philosophy. It's more like a way of living. It's more like giving me the freedom to do what I can do and to be economically and physically present in everything that I can do in my life. Yeah. Okay. So, and uh, what are your plans for future? Do you plan to do another book or something like that? Yeah, so right now we're working on uh, on another book. We're working on the version two of Bitcoin Kids. Like we've been able to take a lot of lots of feedback. We're working on version two, and then we're also working on another book, which is called um, Cyber Security for Kids. Right, just like Bitcoin Kids, now we're working on Cyber Security for Kids, which will involve things like the Trezor Wallet, it will involve things like Nostra. Like how can a young kid? be sovereign online because that's where the world is going through. Like you remember in the beginning of my talk, I said the digital native kids are our kids. Like they were born in the internet. 
right? Not like maybe some of us were analog then before we understand we 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 started learning what the internet is, right? Like my son can man manipulate his smartphone like way better than I was when I was four years old, right? So I think the only thing we as adults can do is to put the parameters, to put the build the path where once as they are growing up, they can really just follow and then they build a, a better world. So that's why I'm also working on uh, a cyber security for kids book. It's going to be like more like a general cyberspace book, but it's going to also involve a lot of stuff. You know, Bitcoin is about security. It's about sovereignty and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. That's very nice. So last question I have for you. You you uh, kind of answered that already, but uh, I always ask everybody uh, this question at, at the end of the interview. What Bitcoin means to you personally? Yeah, to me, Bitcoin is freedom. Like, I've never seen anything that's giving me, like, the, the kind of value Bitcoin gives me in the way I that's transformed my world, the way I see people, the way I react to um, interact with people. I just always have this huge sense of abundance. So there's no time for me to think about what other, another person thinks about me, how they feel like if maybe, <clears throat> or maybe if somebody is making more progress than me, I don't really care because I know I have something that at a certain point in my life, I'm going to be, I'm going to have value. Maybe if I don't have the value today, because since Bitcoin is deflationary, it means it's always increasing in value. So if I have Bitcoin today, over time, my life can be better. It cannot be better today, but it gives me hope for a better future. So why having hope for a better future means that, one, I need to prepare myself for that better future, which means I need to eat healthy. I need to stay fit. I need to keep the people around me happy. So it goes like, like 360, like really, really, really far. And it makes you feel more happier and more peaceful yourself. And you know what it means when you as an you as an individual is happier and peaceful. It means you create a peaceful environment where other people can feel happy and peaceful. So yeah. Wow, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Zonda, for this interview. Uh, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, congratulations for your work and uh, for your educational work and best of luck for uh, next uh, next book. Thank you. Thank you very much again. Thank you so much, Ivan. I think you guys are doing amazing work. Um, it's always a pleasure to come on platforms like, like yours and then talk about what we do. So whoever so cares can hear and then they go take action and then change the world using Bitcoin. Thank you so much. <laughs>